So the Bliss Lights Arc Projector, the successor to the highly acclaimed Skylight, has been on the market for a few months now, but I just recently got my hands on one courtesy of Bliss Lights. And if you've been following the channel for any period of time, you know that I love comparing products and putting together head to head comparisons to take the mystery out of your purchasing dilemmas. Well, the Bliss Lights Arc Projector is no exception to that rule. So we're going to take a close look at this unusual and powerful diode projector with holographic technology and we're going to compare it against its predecessor, the Skylight. Before we kick things off, I'd like to give a huge thanks to Bliss Lights for sending the arc over my way to test. And just a heads up, if you use the code MrTech10 on the Bliss Lights website, you'll receive an additional 10% off. Okay, let's quickly take a look at what comes in the box. First things first, the arc ships in a very attractive and somewhat compact box as compared to the Skylight. You'll find some key features and highlights on the front, along with a brief description of the button functionalities on the very back which is much appreciated because this sort of acts as a quick start guide, which means that you'll be able to spend less time combing through the manual at the start and more time exploring your new projector. And speaking of manuals, that is the very first thing that we are presented with upon opening the box, along with some advertising for additional Bliss Light products. Of course, the USB cord and the wall adapter is included as well, but one thing I do want to point out is that the AC port that plugs into the actual unit now has an L shape as compared to the skylight. This allows the power cable to sit more flush with the body of the arc, which provides a cleaner look. And finally, we get the star of the show, the Bliss Like Arc Projector itself. Now my very first impressions upon holding the arc in hand is just how compact and low sitting it is. Placing the arc on a tabletop, it's immediately apparent that it has a much sturdier base than the skylight. The new unit also features four rubber feet on the very bottom that provides more traction and better protects the surface that you place it on. Another improved physical feature of the arc is the rotation system. You'll recall that on the original Skylight, the rotation system involved physically repositioning the projector between three plastic feet. This system works decently enough, but it only leaves two viewing options, and it isn't the most sturdy and feels a bit top heavy. Additionally, depending on your surface top, the Skylight feet could potentially cause some light scratches over time. It seems that both of these issues have been addressed with the arc, because in addition to the wider flat base, the arc features a smooth and fluid rotation system that allows for more dynamic angling of the nebula and the lasers. This opens the door for more creative and less typical applications. Taking a closer look at the two light emitting sections on the arc, you can see that the nebula fisheye lens is virtually the same as compared to the skylight. But as we move on to the diode laser aperture, some things are quite noticeably different. Firstly, the shape of the laser aperture on the arc is visually larger than on the skylight. Secondly, the aperture is more rounded on the arc. And lastly, the clear lens itself on the arc is extremely textured as opposed to the smooth finish on the skylight. Running a finger across the arc aperture, you can physically feel bumps and grooves of the aperture glass. And that brings us to the head-to-head -head demonstration. Now, I actually own both the blue-green and the blue-blue version of the skylight. But for the majority of my testing, I use the blue green version because it's easier to differentiate. Now, right off the back, I noticed that the arc lens is much more concentrated and has less of a spread effect as with the skylight. Inside of my bedroom, the skylight absolutely blankets my ceiling and even part of the walls and laser dots. But as you can see, the arc lasers are much more pinpointed. But I think that this precision technology is necessary in order for the holographic imagery to really shine. And the result is that the arc image looks alive, ghostly almost, as it slowly bends and twists across your ceiling like a phantom. Another difference I noticed between the two projectors is that the blue nebulas themselves are actually different in design. The skylight nebula looks somewhat like a spider web when the lasers aren't in use, and the arc nebula looks more like traditional dark clouds. Now, depending on your planned application, you might see the tighter circumference of the arc lasers as a pro or a con but I actually really like the more focused lasers myself because it really works well when it's casted at walls and other vertical structures. Most times I'm hesitant to place the skylight outside of its usual 90 degree angle because I worry about the scattered lasers making direct contact with my eyes, which Bliss Lights quite subtly warns against. <laughs> 
But with the arc, I'm not as concerned because I know where that laser is going to hit based on the position that I placed it. Okay guys, sit back, relax, and enjoy some side-by-sides with the arc in the skylight. By now, you've probably already come to the conclusion which of the two bliss light projectors you have a preference for, but I couldn't wrap up the demonstration without highlighting just how striking the arc and the skylight can be working in tandem. Of course they look great side by side casting their own individual images, but when the projectors are both directed to a centralized area, the cosmic illusion is taken to the next level. Playing around with various settings, such as the pulse mode or laser or cloud modes only, can create some really cool imagery and effects, and so I definitely have to concede that the two bliss light projectors look even better when they are working together. I do have a small gripe for the arc, however, and that's that the laser rotation speed cannot be adjusted. In real time, it moves so slowly that in many cases you won't be able to truly appreciate the rotation, unless you're lying beneath it very still for a long time. Another improvement that I like to see for the arc, as well as for the skylight, is the ability to modify the internal timer. I believe that the timer is roughly 5 hours or so for the arc specifically, which is fantastic on the long end, but it would be real nice to be able to shorten that if desired. Additionally, because both of these projectors operate with buttons, this means that they both have electronic internal switches. Now this is just a fancy way of saying that they won't work well with smart plugs. but. This is something that could be easily rectified if the projectors could be operated with switches or with dials so that, for example, when a smart plug is turned on or off that's connected to your projector, the last status that the projector was left in can be recalled. A while back, I actually put out a detailed video explaining how to identify if a device will or will not play nicely with the smart plug. I encourage you to check that out if you'd like to learn more. Moreover, it'll be interesting to see if Bliss Lights actually comes out with a second wave of the arc, which features a blue nebula and the blue lasers, as they've already done in the past with the skylight. Alright guys, here is my summary and final verdict of the Bliss Lights arc as compared to the Bliss Lights projector. If you don't own either of these two projectors and are thinking about picking up one over the other, consider where and how you primarily plan on using it. I would say that the arc is physically more attractive and more dynamic because it offers an array of different viewing angles that the skylight simply can achieve. The holographic imagery that the lasers produce are truly intrinsic and lifelike and it looks really good when aimed at walls and other surfaces beyond your ceiling. And again, it is extraordinarily compact, so it can be tucked away pretty much anywhere because for a truly immersive experience, it's best when the light source isn't easily spotted inside of your room. However, the projection of the arc isn't nearly as wide as with the skylight, so it will work best in smaller spaces unless you choose to pick up multiple units. As for the original and highly acclaimed skylight, it's still king in my book when it comes to budget-friendly planetary projections because of its ability to fill large rooms with brilliant displays of stars and the rotational speed does a perfect job of mimicking the Earth's natural movement in correlation to the cosmos. But if you're looking to spruce up your skylight and add a new layer of vivid holographic imagery to stimulate the imagination, then don't think twice about adding the Bliss Lights Arc Projector to your collection as well. Well that about wraps things up for this one. If you found any part of this video to be helpful, make sure to give a quick thumbs up and to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, peace.